And welcome back to America Talks Live. I'm Miranda Kahn. Joining us again is Newsmax founder Chris Reddy. We've been talking about breaking news today. Steve Bannon is out as the president's chief strategist. Uh, it's been rumored for some time, uh, but now it is official. Multiple media outlets reporting it. In fact, our very own John Gizzi, our White House correspondent, predicted that this was going to happen. He wrote about it. He knew it. Yesterday. Yeah, yesterday. He knew he it. He said it was over Korea. Yeah. There are a lot of things that Steve Bannon said in that interview, but apparently the smoking gun was that he revealed that the president doesn't want to use a military option against North Korea, or he can't. Right. And that had been a fundamental key. You know, the president had been tweeting out, right. I may just use the military here if they don't acquiesce. And I think that was a great strategy President Trump had. Um, and I'm not sure why Steve told uh, that reporter, even off the record, that uh, it's a little unusual for Steve, I think, to do something like that. But, um, you know, the other positions that Steve had mentioned in the American prospect, I think, are very consistent with the president's positions. He's, he right. thinks China's taking advantage of the United mm -hmm. States, and uh, he supports uh, Confederate um, uh, monuments and statues if the public uh, in a locality wants to have them. Right. Um, but another issue that came up recently this week, and, and again, it, you know, it, all everything is pointing to North Korea, that, that that was the, you know, the straw that broke the camel's back, if you will. Uh, but the other issue is Charlottesville, Virginia. Very, very violent mm -hmm. there. Uh, a young girl, 32 years old, uh, died uh, reportedly because a car slammed into her. Uh, 19 people were injured there. And somehow, Bannon kind of became the poster child behind that. Why do you think that is? Well, I'm not so sure Steve was really responsible for the president's comments. I think that he would probably not advise the president uh, to take a different view. I think tr the president was just advocating what he believes. Mm -hmm. But the truth is that, in a, the point, point of view I have had, and I've talked to people at the White House, is that you know this is a very serious issue. Somebody was murdered. One person from one of the groups murdered another group. You need to condemn the, the Nazi sympathizers, the white supremacists. Um, if you want to have a debate on Confederate uh, statues, uh, have that the following week. Those are separate right. issues. Separate issues. And the public, exactly. when you start intertwining those as issues, they think somehow you're not fully condemning. I think right. the president wanted to condemn, and he did make a condemnation. But when he brought back the, con the second day, yeah, yeah, he loses people on that issue, and it creates a lot of anger and angst with people. And it gives, actually, the liberal media a lot of ammunition. If you look, Newsmax has the report on Ameris poll right on Newsmax.com now right. that 62% of Americans believe you should keep Confederate monuments if a locality mm -hmm. wants to keep them. It's part of their tradition, their history. Um, almost uh, many, many presidents, Democrats and Republicans, had actually praised General Lee through the years because he, at the end, put down his sword, did the honorable thing, asked for amnesty from the United States right. government. Um, but the interesting thing is he didn't even want, according to historians, he didn't even want a monument of himself. Right. So, so it's, it's very interesting. I want to ask you, because you've always talked about the reset button. So, okay, so let's say, Bannon out, this officially sets that reset button. What now? Does this help Trump? Does this help further that agenda? Well, agenda even now? before Steve, he's not, he's going today as his last day, but he had been on the losing side of the policy wars in that White House and had been on the losing side. He really had no political allies from what I could see in the White House. He had a couple of friends in the National Security Council. They had been pushed out. So he didn't really have the policy. Steve's a journalist guy. He comes from Breitbart, which mm -hmm. is a fantastic media outlet. It has a point of view. I don't agree with everything, but they do get their word out and people do pay attention. I think that's great. Right. And actually, I think uh, Steve can have more influence on the outside than the inside. And this is a president that does pay attention to various media, including Breitbart. So I think, you know, this is not so negative as much as the press might like to paint it for Steve Bannon. I think he'll live for another day and maybe even a bigger and better day. So um, mutual decision there. Well, we're going to have to see what transpires, and uh, if you get any more insight from the president or Bannon, let us know. Well, or I Gizzy, will for sure. Right? And, and people can <laughs> tune into Newsmax.com every day. There you go. And tune in. And while you're sitting there on the couch, you yeah. can tune in. Chris Ruddy, thanks so much iPhone. for your time. We'll be Thank right you, back. Miranda.